Hey, good morning. How are we doing? Hey, let's stand up to our feet. We're going to worship together, all right? All right, here we go. Come on, get those hands together. the cross you came and broken down, you broken down. Little chains around us, by your grace we are no longer bound, no longer bound. You call me out, you call me out of the grave, you call me into the light, you call my name and then my heart came alive. Your love is greater. this morning excited to be in the Lord's house hey in Psalm 150 verse 6 it says let everything that has breath praise the Lord amen and every single one of us in here today we have breath in our lungs it's a gift and so what we do with that is we praise and we sing loud and we give our God all the thanks can we do that today come on let's keep singing I was buried in me by shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb till I made it. I 
God, we thank you so much for who you are, Lord, that we can stand in your presence, that we can be reminded of your goodness, of your grace, of your love for every single one of us. No matter what we've done, no matter what we're facing, we can stand on your truth that you will never leave us, you will never forsake us. Before I spoke a word, you seem to know me. Cause you have been so, so good. So oh. 
Come on, we sing it out. And only your world will be never ending. Backless love of God. Oh, it chases me down. Fights till I'm found. Leaves and I deny who I could earn. I don't deserve.
Good to have everybody here today on this beautiful day. Praise the Lord. Are you all glad to be in the house of the Lord? Yes. Amen and amen. Let's 
Thank you, Ben, and thank you for being with us today. Uh, I want to continue. Uh, teens, off you go with uh, Jerry. Uh, amen. Thank you for coming this morning. It's great to have two services a week for our teens, well, one on Wednesday at 7, another one, of course, Sunday morning. They're in here with us for praise and worship. Then they next door for their own a message from their leader. Um, Uh, I kind of, we got through uh, why we should trust in God. I want to talk about it some more because I think it's urgent in these last days that these two words that we really understand and we really get it and grasp it and put it in our hearts. Trust God. What, what two words am I talking about? Trust. trust God. Now, Rhonda, before we start, should we do a little uh, faith therapy? Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, all right. Let's do some faith therapy. Uh, it's very important. What's therapy all about anyway? It's not because you're going crazy. I'm talking about the kind of therapy that makes you stronger. And uh, we need our faith built up all the time. All the time. We need to be encouraged and we need to have our faith built. One way we do that to keep our faith strong is speaking the word of God out loud. Uh, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we have some scriptures we'll say together uh, for this little session of uh, faith therapy. Are you ready? Hebrews 13:6 thir says, so that we may Wow, you're all out of sync. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> Hebrews 3, it sounded good. Yes, it's the Word of God. You were a lot uh, f f quicker than over here. They're a little lazy. It's fine. It's fine. Isaiah 41, 13. Are you ready? Let's go. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Isn't that a beautiful one? God's got your back. He's got you by the hand. No one can snatch you out of the hand of God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I feel faith rising up right now. John 14, 27, let's go. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth. Yes, don't let your heart be troubled in these last days about anything uh, because God has given you his peace to guard your, ha your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Amen and amen. Here's the next one, Romans 8, 15. Okay, let's go. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, 
ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Amen. Can you feel it, saints? Can you feel it working? Working? All right, next verse. And the last one, Isaiah 43, 1 and 2. Are you ready? Let's go. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon me. Hallelujah. You feel that? Faith has just been built. The Bible says so. You can accept it. In Jesus' name, your faith just got stronger. Another way we build our faith in therapy is uh, by uh, a hand, hand movements. How I many you know that's a great thing to do to keep you remembering? Philippians 4.13, it's both hands up in the air, closed fist. For every word said, there's 10 words here, put one finger up. Are you ready? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Hallelujah. It's true. Do you believe it? And then prayer builds up your most holy faith, the Bible tells us. So let's pray the hedge of protection prayer taken from Job chapter 1. Are you ready? Lift your hands unto God as we pray. Oh, Lord, build a hedge about me and my house and about all that I have on every side. Bless the work of my hands and increase my substance in the land. Cause not the wicked to stretch forth their hands to touch me. In Jesus' name, amen. Give Jesus a little bit of a hand clap. You did good. You did good in therapy. Amen and amen. Now, we've been talking about those two words. Oh, wow. What are they again? Trust God. That's right. Uh, it's harder than you think. Now, saints, uh, I've been giving you the results of trusting in God and why we should trust in God. But I neglected to tell you how to trust in God. I want to give you some easy principles uh, practical principles, take-home principles that you can put into practice that's going to help you resolve this issue once and for all, and you will genuinely trust God. Oh, this is good. Now, let me say this. Many people today, and you know this, many people today find it very hard to trust anybody anymore because you've been hurt. Uh, you've been betrayed. Someone that you thought was your friend betrayed you. Anybody? Am I talking to anybody here? Or? Mm, yes. Uh, how about somebody lied about you, gossiped about you, huh? And you find it hard to trust someone that lied about you. They have to build that trust back. You know what I'm talking about? When someone hurts you, it's, it's, people find it difficult. Every survey I looked at, they find it very difficult today to trust in anybody. Hallelujah. But how I many know you can trust in God? Hallelujah. God's not like a man. Hallelujah. Thank you, our Heavenly Father. Hallelujah. And also, uh, broken promises. Have, have you ever made a promise and broken it? Has somebody made you a promise and broken it? Have you? Well, you know, when someone makes a promise, uh, they, they're not lying to you. Their, their intentions were good, but the end result was bad. And that broke that trust. You said you would do it, and you backed out. You didn't do it. Okay, now I'm finding it hard to trust you the next time or the next time. Well, let me help you. This does not apply when it comes to God Almighty. I love this Joshua scripture, Robert. Joshua 1, 5. I just love it. Come on. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake God thee. God Almighty will not fail you, will not leave you, nor forsake you. Do you know what it means to, to uh, be abandoned? Do you know what it means? That's, uh, that's a betrayal. Uh, to forsake means to turn your back on somebody. There's a betrayal. 
God says, I'll never do that. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. I like the first part, though, because this applies to every single person here. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. Man, I receive that in Jesus' mighty name. As I was, as I was with Moses, say what? As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Wow. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Look at this one, Titus 1, 2. How many know God cannot lie? It's impossible. He cannot. Come on. In hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. Now notice it says he cannot lie, not will not lie. If it said will not lie, that means he could lie. But when it says he cannot lie, it means it's impossible for God to lie. No man can say that, but God can. The word says it. Because God is truth by his essence. He's truth. So everything God says is truth. Everything he does is in the parameters of truth. Everything. Hallelujah. God cannot lie. You know, when you hear stuff like that, and God will never betray you, never forsake you, how much easier does that make it for you to trust him? A lot easier. Look at this one. Second, when it comes to broken promises, 2 Corinthians 1.20, please. 2 Corinthians 1.20. For all the promises of God in him are yes, and in him, amen, to the glory of God through us. How many of his promises? How many of God's promises? All of them. Not some of them, as some people say. Uh, all the promises of God in him. In who? In Christ. See, when you're in Christ, all the promises are yes and amen. You can't say that for people outside of Christ. But in Christ... All of God's promises are yes and amen. So we benefit from the promises of, promises of God as be, because we're born again and we're in Christ and he's in us. And they're all yes. Not maybe, not no. They're yes. Say yes. yes. And amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Let me give you the three practical steps now um, to really genuinely trust in God. I want to help you with this. They help me. Let me help you. What's the two words again? Uh -huh. That will change your life when you fully understand that and fully grab it and settle it once and for all. It will change your life forever. You're not going to be afraid of anything anymore. Here's number one. Know what you believe and believe it. <laughs> know what you believe and believe it. It seems, and so often, we say we believe God, we say we trust God, but by our actions and by our words, we deny that. Amen. Are you with me? It's easy to say, I'm a believer. Hmm? Right? It's another thing to walk that and to live that. So know what you believe and believe it. Yeah. The Bible calls Christians believers. We're believers. That means we believe, <laughs> genuinely, truly believe. But for many people, they don't know what it means to believe. You must know God, know him. And in the knowing of God will, will come the trusting in God. Does that make sense to anybody? True. If I began to uh, have a relationship with you and talk with you every day, three, four, five times a day, and we're talking and, and it's wonderful and I'm sharing all kinds of wonderful things. Does that make it easier for you to trust me? Yes. How about if I talk to you once every six months or once every three weeks or four months? You're less willing to trust. There's no relationship. But when we have that relationship with God, it's gonna make it much easier for you to trust him. Let me show you something here. 2 Timothy 1.12. <coughs> Go ahead. Are we there? 2 Timothy 1.12. Know what you believe. Go ahead. For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, 
For I know whom I have believed. Say that again. For I what? I know whom I have believed. I know whom I have believed. Paul's talking of his relationship, his dependence, his roots in Christ brought him to say, I know whom I believed in, yes. and I am persuaded that God is able. Yes. God is able. Say that. God is able. He's able to do immeasurably more than all you can ask or imagine in Christ Jesus. Whoo! Wow. So what I'm trying to tell you, the deeper you go with God, the more you know him, the easier it is for you to trust him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Holy Spirit, reveal your word right now. Yes. Hallelujah. Look at Colossians 2, 7, the NLT, please. I like it in the NLT. Let your roots grow down into him. Let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught, and you will overflow with thankfulness. There's a key right there. Get to know Jesus, would you please? Spend some time with him. How do you get to know somebody? Spend time with him. Study. Grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says. Yes. In so doing, you will not fall. Yes. Grow in the grace and knowledge. How do you grow in grace? Prayer. How do you grow in knowledge? Study. Study. How do you get to know somebody? If I want to know George Washington, I'm going to read all the books I can get on him. Well, you've got a book on Jehovah. You've got a book that talks about the one who loves you and died for you yes. and saves you. And his name is Jesus, the one true living God. Yes. Get to know him. Hey, get to know him. In Jesus' name, in so doing, you will not have any hesitation in putting your trust in him. Amen. Know what you believe and actually believe it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo, pastor, pastor, pastor. You're out of the gate too strong. Go easy, go easy. Back it up a little bit. Back it up a little bit. Know that the Lord, that he is God and there is no other. Resolve it. The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. And what's that talking about? You could take the, the name Lord out, the word Lord, and put Jesus there. Yes. It's the same thing. Jesus is the Lord of the Old Testament and the New Testament because there's one Lord. Amen. And his name is Jesus. One God and his name is Jesus. Hallelujah. One Savior and his name is what? Jesus. Second Peter 1, 1, please. Second Peter 1, 1. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. The righteousness of God, our Savior Jesus Christ. There it's plain. Jesus Christ, he's named as the King of glory. The God above all gods. And at the name of Jesus... Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and he's Lord of all. Look at Colossians 1.16. See, once we get to know these things that I'm giving you here, he's the creator, he's the sustainer, he's the savior. His name is Jesus. Nothing's impossible with him. What does that do to your head? Wrap your head around it. You get to know him more and more by prayer and by study, reading the word of God daily, and it makes it Easy. It's a no-brainer to trust in God. Come on. For by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. All things were created by him, by Jesus and for him, for Jesus. He's above all thrones and powers and rulers and authorities. Wow. Jesus is creator. Yes. He is sustainer. Wow, saints. When you understand these things, it, it, it should wow you to the point of saying, hey, I will trust in you. I pick you, Jesus, to put my trust in. Does that make sense to anybody here? Yes. All right.
here's the second thing. The first thing is know what you believe and believe it. That's the way for genuine trust in God. The second thing is accept God's word as truth, absolute truth. Accept God's word as absolute truth. You all believe the word of God is true? All of it? Really? All of it from Genesis to Revelation, all of it? Hmm. This is the complete revelation of God right here. When someone says, well, there's another one here. Mm -mm. No, no, no. This is the beginning and Revelation tells us how it's going to end. And it ends well for us and poorly for the devil. You all know that? Yeah. Hallelujah. All of it is God's word. Trusting God's word is trusting God. Did you know that? Trusting God is trusting his word. Trusting his word is trusting God. You can't separate them. They're one and the same. Yes. Thy word is truth. Yes. And who is truth? Jesus. Yes. See, truth is a person. I am the way. I am the truth. See, the I am is the truth. I am the life. Hallelujah. No one cometh to the Father but by me. How plain can that be? Why are people and denominations still looking for another way? There is no other way. Well, wait a minute. The Bible does say there is another way. Be ye perfect as I am perfect, says God. I guess if you're perfect, you're okay. Anybody here perfect? 100% of the time, all the time, not one mess up from birth all the way till now? Hmm? Absolutely not. That's why, listen, that's why the Father had to send His Son, His perfect Son, as a sacrifice for us, a perfect sacrifice. Hallelujah. Look at Psalm 119, 138. The NIV, please. The statutes you have laid down are righteous. They are fully trustworthy. There it is. I love that word, trustworthy. Can you say that? Trustworthy. What does that mean? He's worthy of all your trust. <laughs> he's trustworthy. Uh, he's righteous. Uh, the Bible says the word, the statutes, you have laid down are righteous. They are fully, say fully, fully, 100% trustworthy. When you understand that and know that, you won't have any problem with scriptures like, uh, by his stripes ye are healed. You're not going to have any problems with that because it's trustworthy. You can trust that. And upon trusting that, the power of God comes. Hallelujah. Look at Psalm 145, 13, the NIV as well. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is faithful to all his promises and loving toward all he has made. See, why don't you grab a hold of that verse? Number one, his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Number two, it's his dominion endures through all generations. He's never going to stop being the king of kings and lord of lords. And the Lord is faithful. You understand that? He's faithful. He's faithful to his word and he's faithful to you. And the Lord is faithful to all his promises, every single one of them, loving toward all he has made. That would include you. Turn to somebody and say, God loves you. I think somebody needed to hear that. Did you get it? Corey, did you tell this nice lady down here? Everybody needs to hear it. Did everybody get a God, a God loves you? Everybody get one? Keith, God loves you. Rhonda's all by herself in the booth. God loves you, Rhonda. Of course, nobody's telling me that, but that's okay. That's okay. I know I'm loved. You don't have to tell me that. Ephesians 1.13, please. <laughs> Ephesians 1.13. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Having believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit. 
Yeah, having trusted or believed, they, they walk together, they're brothers. You're marked with the promise, Holy Spirit. What does it say? After hearing, upon hearing the gospel, the word of truth, you believed, you trusted God. That's how you got saved. As soon as you trusted God, as soon as you believed God, God Almighty gave you faith. Do I need to say it again? Trust and belief is of man. Faith is of God. And not the same. Faith is divine. I am the author. Jesus said he, that he is the author and finisher of your faith. You're not. He is. Hallelujah. Believe me, if we could bottle it, Walmart would sell it. <clears throat> Look at Psalm 17.7, please. Psalm 17.7. Show thy marvelous loving kindness, O thou that savest by thy right hand them which put their trust in thee from those yeah. that rise up against so them. So God Almighty saves by his right hand. Who is at the right hand of God? Jesus. Jesus is the right hand of God. The Bible says his right hand, singular, never said, it never talks about God's hands being stretched forth to us. Talks about his right hand, his hand of mercy, his hand of righteousness, his hand of healing, of salvation. Who is that? That's Jesus. And his right hand has been extended to mankind for 2,000 years ever since the cross. And it will continue to be extended until Jesus returns. Then the right hand is withdrawn and God's left hand comes forth, which is the hand of wrath. So while his right hand is extended, yes. my advice to anybody here that doesn't know Jesus, you were dragged here by your mom or a friend or you happened in here thinking there was a video store. I mean, <laughs> I don't know what your excuse is, but I would accept Christ, I would call out to Jesus. I'm talking to you right now yes. as someone that cares about you and as a pastor. Call upon the name of the Lord and ye shall be saved, the Bible says. So get it done. Get that business done and start trusting in God. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Psalm 511, please. Psalm 511. But let all those rejoice who put their trust in you. Let them ever shout for joy, because you defend them. Let those also who love your name be joyful in you. But let all those rejoice who put their trust in you, O oh God. Anybody here trusting God right now? Let me hear a little rejoicing. That's what it says. Let all those rejoice. Come on, somebody. There you go. Let them ever shout for joy. Can I get some shouting in this place right now? Because, oh God, they trust in you, you defend them. You deliver them. You help them. Let those also who love you, your name be joyful in you. Anybody love the name of Jesus? Yeah. Hallelujah. Whoo. What's those two words again? I forgot already. Oh, trust God. Those two words that will change. It's a game changer. Proverbs 28, 25, New King James, please. He who is of a proud heart stirs up strife, yes. but he who trusts in the Lord will be prospered. So the person that trusts in the Lord will what? What happened? God will prosper them. Yes. Prosper them. Now, uh, the word prosper in the Bible is gotten a bad rap by a lot of denominations and a lot of ministers because it's been presented in a, in a very money type way yes. that if you do this God will make you wealthy God you now part of the definition of prosperity is wealth I don't have a problem with that but that's not the only issue there's some things more important than money when it comes to God prospering you how about healthy children at home you like that is that prospering how about kids that love the Lord and serve the Lord and come to church is that prospering huh how about your health prospering how about that what amount of money is that worth there's a scripture 
that we're told to pray for, uh, what is it, Third John, Rhonda? Third John? I'm not quite sure of the verse. Uh, chapter 1, verse 2. There's only one chapter anyway, so verse 2. It says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. What he's saying here is I'm praying for your health to prosper even as your soul prospers. So this tells me, this tells me when people tell you, well, when the, it's just about the soul and about the soul being healthy. Not according to this, it talks about your health being healthy as well. So I'm gonna lift your hands right now. Oh, I'm gonna make some people mad. Come on, lift your hands right now. I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna know what I believe and believe it and do it right now. Third John 1, 2. Beloved, I pray for you right now. I wish above all things that each one of you may prosper, your health prosper, your family prosper, your business prosper, your job prosper. I pray that your finances will prosper even as your soul prospers in Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. What is this saying? It's saying even as your soul prospers. Nobody's going to argue with that. But even as your soul prospers, other things are going to prosper in your life as well, including your health, your family, your children, and everything else. So you can just know and receive it and believe what you believe. Oh, look at this one. Oh, you're all going to get mad now. First, First Chronicles 5.20. I just love this. I, I, I love it. You know, it happened at 8.30 service as well. As soon as I started talking about the Lord prospering your health and your finances and your family and your children, I'm being drawn to pray to the time of prayer right now. First Chronicles 5.20 ties right in. The NLT, please. Check this out. They cried out to God during the battle, and he answered their prayer because they trusted in him. So the Hagarites and all their allies were defeated. Because they trusted in God. Huh? God protected them, and God gave them the victory. Why? Because they cried out, and God answered their prayer. Why did he answer their prayer? It's right there. Because they trusted in him. Do you see it there? You don't need to go to cemetery for three, I mean, seminary for three years to believe this. There it is. Well, that's not what God really means. You know, I'm tired of people saying that. I'm tired of it. You, you're not God's spokesman as far as uh, like he's senile. He doesn't know what he's saying. And let me correct it for you. This is, have you ever heard somebody say that? Well, this is what God really means. Seriously? You know what the Bible says? The Bible says, let God be true and every man a liar. And if you mess with his word, Add to, subtract from, you will not eat from the tree of life. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. Leave it as it is. Know what you believe and believe it. And he answered their prayer because they trusted in him. And what was the result? Victory, victory, victory. Now, every time I put two fingers up, that reminds you of two words, right? But it's also symbolic of something. What is this symbolic of? Victory. So put up two hands, two, fingers. two hands with two fingers on each for victory. Now what, did the, what, does, what does this remind you of? The two words that will bring a result of victory. You got it. So next time, next time, the phone's not ringing for any new jobs. So you're going to look at your family and you're going to do this. Next time the checking account uh, is, is bouncing like a ball, you're going to go like this, oh God. The God that owns the cattle on a thousand hills, all the gold and silver is his. I will trust in him. Next time the doctor calls and says something doesn't look right, you're going to do this. Look right at that doctor and put two fingers up. Two fingers up. Well, what's that? It's two words, doc. Trust God, and I'm trusting God. It also is a V 
for victory. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So after the first service, people are leaving and they're doing this to me. <laughs> they're doing this to me. That gets scary because it can... <laughs> it can, it can yeah, I like it. So I, I do that back to them. I go up to someone that, that needs a healing and needs deliverance, I just do this. I don't say a word. They know what it means. It means trust God and you'll have the victory. It's kind of a silent code now we have as believers. What does that mean? No, don't touch it. Don't touch it. Amen. I have one last one which I'm going to stop because I'm really called. No, no, no. I'm called to the place of prayer right now. I want you to prosper, spirit, soul, and body. I want your health to prosper. I want your family to prosper. God wants it more than me. God wants you to prosper even as your soul prospers. Do you understand? As your soul prospers, that's a given. You get in the word, you pray. But there's more. Even as your soul prospers, these other things will prosper as well. Yes. So stand on your feet with me right now. Ben will come. I have one last one, and it's a mountain. It's, it's big. A and those are the three. Know God, and know, know what you believe, and believe it. Am I right? Is that true? And accept God's word as absolute truth. Can we just settle that? Can we settle it? Because once you say you accept it, as absolute truth, you're not going to have a problem with, oh man, the doctor says this and that, but, but, but the truth is, by his stripes I am healed. And if it's absolute in you, it's done. No worries. Hallelujah. There it is. There's one more to go. I'm not going to give it to you. You got to come back next week. No, you got to come back next week. It's called a hook. <laughs> There's only one left, but it's monstrous. It's huge. It's gonna, it's gonna rock your world. The two boys here. Amen and amen. I talked about prayer, and I mean it. God's word is true. He's not one that he, and he cannot lie. His word is absolute truth. Trustworthy. As you put, genuinely put your trust in God, mountains move, heaven opens, angels come to the rescue, miracles begin to flow like a river. So let me say this. If you need prayer, I do not want you to leave here the same way you came. If you need prayer because of a complication in your household, because of a, a relationship, because of a, a, a health issue, I just prayed for your health to prosper. Come on, we're gonna believe it. Your health will prosper. I pray for your, your every organ in your body to come into line with the Word of God. The Creator speaks it! In Jesus' name. If you need prayer, we have pastors here who will pray with you. Get out of your chair. Don't let the devil steal a miracle. Come on. Come up forward if you need prayer. If something's weighing heavy on your heart, get up here right now in Jesus' name. If there is a need in your household, come on. Get up here in Jesus' name. And then all the pastors come and start praying, please. All the chaplains, pastors, ministers, come on. Let's pray in Jesus' mighty name.